So the last type of intervention that I want to talk about is setting up organizations that behave like firms in the sense that they have production functions, they produce goods and services, but they're not profit maximizers. So this would be non-government organizations like NGOs, uh, charities, any foundations, whatever. It could also be government agencies themselves. Just organizations that do the work of using economic resources to produce economic outputs, but they don't sell them on a market to maximize profit. Now, you might be skeptical having gone through this course thinking that, well, there's all these information problems if you try to allocate resources without uh, you know, a market, right? You right. We talked about four. There's like principal agent problems. There's computational problems. There's incentive problems. There's Pareto problems. But it turns out we're not using non-market solutions to allocate all the resources in the economy. We're just using it to allocate some of them. Particularly, we're going to focus usually if we're efficient on the ones that markets are going to do a bad job allocating. So public goods, uh, things with lots of externalities that are, that are positive, for example. We're not going to expect firms to deliver the right level, and it, one solution is to just have somebody else do it. Okay, So we're not going to have the problem of like the computational complexity of the entire economy. We're going to have the computational complexity of just one firm or one organization trying to figure out how to efficiently uh, use its resources and tackle a smaller part of the economy. So they need to know, for example, demand and they need to know what the real externality sort of what's the social optimum so they do have an information problem but it's not as enormous as the information problem of running a whole economy okay so that's one thing a second thing is that they're still embedded in an economy and they're using resources and usually they're purchasing these resources on the private markets and if these organizations are run well they're going to minimize their cost to produce services and if they minimize their costs, they are going to do that by setting their marginal rate of technical substitution for whatever their uh, production function is equal to the ratio of their inputs. In this case, I did wages and capital, but it could be lots of other inputs. And if they're doing that, then that means input efficiency is still achieved, even though these guys are not strictly profit maximizers. Okay? Input efficiency, remember, requires that everybody who's operating in the economy is using their uh, inputs with the same marginal rate of technical substitution as everybody else. And setting them equal to a price ratio is one way to do that. The other kind of things, you know, efficiency conditions in the economy involved prices of outputs. And that's going to be a bit more complicated because this firm is not going to set those prices to equal marginal cost or to maximize revenue. If it does a good job, it's going to have them equal sort of like the total social value of these goods or the true marginal cost of these goods. Doing that requires information, and that's probably the big theme of this uh, section, is that interventions into the market can improve welfare or lower welfare depending on what kind of situation or market you're in. If the market is well described by perfect competition, interventions almost always make things worse. But perfect competition is frequently not the case. And when it's not the case, interventions can make things better. But to do it, you need to have information and you need to have the people making the intervention be doing it in sort of a good faith effort. And that's kind of what our last unit will be briefly about.